And when physicians asked, uh, you know, typically they would ask the pharmaceutical rep or whatever for information, well, how long does this drug stick around? Which is a normal thing to ask. Okay, we call that pharmacokinetics is the fancy yep. word for it. Um, you know, how long does the drug last in your body before it gets decomposed? One of the fundamental characteristics that is always an analyzed with any new pharmaceutical. Um, those studies actually weren't done. Yep. Uh, nor were the, where does the drug go in your body? The fancy word for that is pharmacodistribution. And how long is it active? That's pharmacokinetics. None of that stuff was done. Um, it was done to a limited extent, but not rigorously. And not looking at this full cascade that the RNA is actually not really the drug. It's sort of the drug. Um, but the active principle is the thing that the RNA makes, the protein, which makes it complex. And it really doesn't fit regular vaccine uh, regulatory paradigms. Then fast forward to the present, and we have these odd observations about immunosuppression. And then we had this paper come out in Cell in January uh, from this team from Stanford that did the fine needle aspirations. Uh, so they actually pulled cells out of people's bodies. It wasn't in a test tube or in a Petri dish. And they said, how long does this RNA stick around? And it turns out that it doesn't stick around for half an hour, an hour or two hours, which is what the pharma had been telling the physicians. But in fact, it sticks around for at least 60 days. They didn't test beyond that. Right. And furthermore, it produces more protein in your blood, more spike protein of the Remember, the, the, this is one of the things I got fact-checked on after our infamous interview, yep. that spike is absolutely not a toxin. The spike that's in the vaccine is not a toxin. That's the, what they claimed. The spike has two main components, S2 that kind of stays in the cell and gets cut from the other part that's extracellular called S1 that circulates and binds to S2 and does all this wonderful stuff. In the vaccine and in the virus, the S1 is identical. In the vaccine and the virus, the S2 is almost identical, except for it has two little point mutations, two prolines, which are there that makes the uh, product, when it's expressed, more immunogenic from an antibody standpoint.